we've got our main event of the night. This is so exciting. We have Luke Chiomos out of Hellfish and Alejandro Mayorja out of um, Alliance Westchester. I think he actually is from Alliance in actual Brazil and moved here yeah. in the past year. Oh, Ecuador. Ecuador. Right, here it is. Here go. it is. <laughs> All right. This will be a very exciting match. Both of these gentlemen are extremely technical extremely quick um, and both just so so good the other thing is just like the last match uh, with the other Shiomos brother this matchup is also stylistically so different um, which is what I'm really excited for the last thing is they actually they train together sometimes so they're friends um, so I wonder how it will help or hurt each other's game knowing kind of what the other one does or doesn't do Sometimes those can be the most difficult matches for both competitors because they know that they throw everything at each other in the training room and they know that some of their, you know, highest percentage A game stuff, their opponent is very well aware of it. And uh, that can really throw both competitors. And sometimes those are the most exciting matches to watch. And I feel like in jujitsu, it's more common that you see uh, training partners or friends competing against each other because, you know, you're, you're still trying to um, submit each other, but it's not like you're punching each other in the face where it's a little bit easier to compete against the friends sometimes, you know? So we have, Absolutely. We have a, a pull. pull. Yeah. And then Luke immediately drop back. Uh, he was looking to enter. He was looking to start a leg entanglement there. Um. So we have Luke on the bottom, left knee shield. Alejandro on the top. There's some hand fighting going on, some fighting for head positioning. It's a lot quiet in here now. Yeah, everybody's paying attention to the main event right now and keeping an eye. And yeah, absolutely. <laughs> we've got so this is interesting. We're seeing uh, the second Shilmos brother on the card sh showing a similar style game to his brother in the last match. As we previously mentioned, also just recently got his black belt um, at the, I think, end of last year. And he's been on the scene locally the, the past year for a lot of things, also winning um, in the HCS team event uh, that his brother was also on. They took gold against uh, three or four other teams. He'll look to go underneath Will Luke, but Alejandro battles out, and he'll turn and face him, and we're back into Luke's open guard. Alejandro trying to throw the legs by, trying to control the knees, but it's tough when you've got Luke's, you've got such long legs, and when you have a really long-legged guard player, it can be tough to clear those knees and start to settle into passes. And uh, these knee shield positions can be really tough too, especially when your opponent has really long limbs. Um, Luke is going to be trying to potentially dig underneath uh, Alejandro's knee and maybe turn into a leg entanglement or potentially look to lock up a Kimura or maybe even work to fight for an underhook and come up on top and utilize it to sweep. The thing about these black belt matches is that they're always so good. It truly is just a game of inches because, you know, it, they know so much already that it's so difficult, I think, to just find that little opening. Exactly. And these two competitors already respect each other so much because they've seen each other out on the, out on the com competition scene and they've trained with each other in the training room. And it's not like they train with each other every single day, um, but they've ran into each other enough where they, you know, they definitely respect uh, the other one's game, and they're not going to take too many risks that are going to put them into uh, bad spots. Also, both corners being coached by um, some <coughs> high-level coaches and previous competitors themselves. We have Tim Carpenter out of Hellfish. That's going to be on Luke's side. And then we have Chris Downing on Alejandro's side, and he's the owner and head coach at Alliance. So it's kind of cool to see head coaches and their high-level competitors here at this format. Yeah, having a having a high level, a coach who has competed at the highest levels really can make a huge difference uh, from the standpoint of developing and building a solid competition team. Right now we're seeing Alejandro in Luke's close guard, um, and I, I know for sure that Luke is very good at close guard, so this is definitely a position that Alejandro should want to try to start to get out of, possibly posture up. 
we see Luke with his left arm underneath Alejandro, and Alejandro almost like smothering and pushing away Luke. Yeah, he's just kind of pushing on the cheek there because Luke was turned away. But again, that, that's an uncomfortable position. Um, but Alejandro is going to need to create some space and posture up and get out of this closed guard because this is a dangerous position to be. Yeah, you have to be careful of um, extending your arm like that in, the, in someone's closed guard because some people will just really snatch that arm up, um, especially when your posture is broken like this. Luke getting his uh, left arm overhook, but I don't think it was quite through where he wanted it. So he, he ultimately takes it back. And now he's got head control and we will go into the second round. These black belt matches go so quickly. I feel like the five minutes seems like it's over just like that, because like we said, it's a battle of inches. It's a battle of, you know, yeah, not one person making a mistake. Not literally quickly, but, you know, like it yeah. feels like it's it. Over. Yeah, exactly. Sure. The, the five minutes seems to seems to go by extremely quickly. The thing about the matches, too, with, with black belts is they always look so composed after five minutes, ten minutes. They just they look like they could keep going forever. Makes sense, I guess, because obviously they're black belts. But Exactly, and they have the pacing down, and they're so used to, you know, spending 60 minutes in a class or an open mat of every single person headhunting them, trying to be the guy who goes home that night and says, I tapped out a black belt. So these guys are used to almost like every role is a competition because everybody's trying to come after them everywhere sure. they go. So Another pull and a oh, sit Luke back in from Luke. Leg, but Alejandro able to clear Single that foot, leg but Luke's right back into it, uh, going for that straight, straight ankle lock. Um, it's going to be tough to finish here um, without turning to the outside, but he's going to look to switch to the up inside. here. And, yeah, there we go. And, and Alejandro, Alejandro will though, clear it and come up. Yep, he used that space. Now Alejandro's going to try and pass from the standing position. Um, I think he was... Yeah, we're back more into this knee shield position here, which can be really tough uh, for Alejandro to pass. Yeah. We did see in the last match. I was that, I was uh, scared for a second. He almost beat me in the quickest sub record <laughs> in this round. Yes, <laughs> yes you're right. That, very that very close. Been, but he dropped back on that very quickly. Um, Luke, in a, Luke looking to control the arms, kind of a battle for again head and arm positioning and control. Luke collar tying with the left arm. Alejandro recognizing that, taking it off. Good control from both guys that we're seeing here about a minute into the match. Here at Arena Grappling, main event, hosted by Drugs MMA and Jiu-Jitsu. Heavy breathing from Alejandro. He's really trying to, to beat this knee shield here. He's going upper body, lower body. Luke back into his open guard, doing a good job of keeping his hip, hips active, keeping them elevated. He'll throw a right butterfly hook in. Luke coming in on the leg like here, and Alejandro looked like he was going to drop back on his own leg, but Luke did a good job Thank of pulling yeah. his legs outside. I think he recognized it, so yeah. Alejandro stood right back up. We'll go right back into like that knee cut position. Luke with that left knee shield. Little under two minutes in here, seeing very similar position to round one. Luke happy to take the bottom, Alejandro happy to be on the top. And it's going to be interesting to see what sort of techniques Alejandro employ employs. There's been a lot of grip fighting, a lot of hand fighting uh, for who's getting control in that position. But oh, from here, now, looks like Luke could elevate to potentially get in on this leg here. Yep. Alejandro, Alejandro with a good attempt at a step over, but Luke able to maintain his right butterfly hook there. It's almost like a man a mantis guard, I believe, is what I was seeing with his his left hand on the on the leg. Now we're going to go back to that original spot. One hook in for Luke. He'll look to elevate as Alejandro keeps a good base. Oh, there we go. Very nice. He could enter into a leg, leg here over. all the way through. Oh, Alejandro does a good job, though, of kicking that out. Um, Luke did a really good job of pulling that leg from that leg drag position into it. The only thing keeping you safe is keeping your foot on the other side of their leg, and he was able to pull that in, um, which you can tell that's going to put Alejandro on notice. He's going to know that if he's in a leg drag position, he needs to watch because that is a uh, very difficult entry to get out of if they hit it quickly. In that scramble, he, he technically didn't have the knee line, but it almost looked like a calf slice could have happened, but he pulled his leg out just in time before he was able to come up with it. Yeah, he absolutely could have used that. He could have used that to keep spinning and actually uh, potentially taking the back. And um, There's a lot of opportunity from there that you can create. Alejandro looking to go chest to chest, but just struggling to pass that left knee shield of Luke's here. 
both competitors, you can definitely hear the breathing happening at this point. We're three minutes, 40 seconds in of just round two. I'm curious to see if they'll change up their games. They both stuck to very specific game plans here. Yeah, and both competitors, like you said, you can see that they're, they're both starting. Nice to, oh. entry. Yep, just a little see. short of the knee line is Luke, but he could ride it to the back and Alejandro will come out. Yeah, he's trying to use that. You know what? It looks like he's trying to use that to lock up the that leg and then actually attack the second leg um, there. Because if you if he gets his leg into that position, it's really, really tough to uh, to kick out and defend. And so if he's then able to start looking for those straight ankle lock attempts um, or heel hooks. Oh, here you can go. Maybe see Alejandro looking for 50, his 50. leg, maybe a toe hold. But he does telegraph occasionally when he's going to sit back for his leg lock. And I, I think Luke does see that. Yep. Luke has the potential to either come on top here or play legs with Alejandro. It looks like he's going to use it to come, up, come on up on top. Short time here. We have about 20 seconds left. We are in Alejandro's closed guard. Keeping the posture down for Luke. Luke's going to try to posture up here in the last 15 seconds of round two. This could very well potentially be our first match we see going to a fourth unlimited overtime. I period. cannot believe that we haven't gone to any overtimes. And honestly, I'm here for an overtime if we need it. I, I'm, I'm hoping. Oh, yeah. <laughs> this goes goes for all. It's our last match of the night. And you know what? Sometimes those long overtimes are best left for the last match of the night. So you don't have competitors waiting, ready to go um, with an unknown amount of time because that can be tough. Uh, but this match so that I had asked um, oh we got the hype train coming in with some clapping so I had asked Luke's brother Zach uh, since he had also trained with both of them and obviously he was on our last match I asked him what he thought of this match and he said you know um, he was really hoping that they would just both tire each other out really <laughs> a, a ton so that way his week of training would be easy if he had to roll with either that's of them. great I like that <laughs> I like that a lot here we go. All right. Round, Round three, three is underway. No submission so far. So just a reminder, if there is a submission in this round, that competitor will win. Um, if there's no submission, they'll be going to an overtime. No time limit until there is a submission. Alejandro looking to come to the cage. He said, come on over here. They have stepped up the pace right now, and you can see they are wrestling from the feet. Now, the last couple times, Luke has cho chosen to concede bottom position and play from there. It doesn't look like he's wanting to do that at all this third round. Um, it looks like he's wanting to to get on top and start working how he ended the last round. He's going to keep himself on the cage. He's got the underhook. Alejandro does on that left arm. Again, they're battling for head and arm positioning here. Lots yeah. of movement. Can you hear lots of breathing in this very quiet environment on this main event? And that's the thing about about cage work in a jiu-jitsu submission only match. It's so different because you can concede back position up against the cage uh, because no one's hitting you, right? The worst thing that's going to happen is 100%. you're going to get taken down. Yep. They could actually hit the move that Dan was talking about, which is the cheese grater. This would be this. This, this would, would be, be the, the position. The cheese grater. Cheese grater is tough though when your opponent's got a rash guard on. That's true. I guess they would have to have no shirt on to actually make that yeah. happen. <laughs> But we're seeing Luke here with um, double unders. Good control. He's got a palm-to-palm -palm grip. And he's going to take oh. him down. Is Luke. It looks like Alejandro almost went for a flying leg. Oh, okay. You know um, what? I think you're right. But Luke climbs up. Yep, he's able to get Finds himself mount. in top mount. And this is a dangerous position to be in. This is a dangerous position to be in if you're Alejandro. Luke has incredible, incredible attacks from the back and incredible attacks from... Um, very good darces, very good rear naked chokes, very good head and arm triangles. I think um, Alejandro was able to get uh, a leg back in as well now, right? So it looks yeah, like so he does have the he does have the leg back left in. Leg. Um, the knee though is is through, and he's able to keep that knee pressure. Which, given Alejandro's turn facing uh, facing away, it's you know it's really a high risk of a back take here. But Alejandro is doing a good job at threatening to explode back flat to his back. Another match where I feel like they, you know, they're giving it their all. They're thinking incredibly technically. They're being smart. Some of the best grapplers, they don't move quickly. They just move super technically, and I think that is really cool to watch. Yeah, and especially when you're, you know, 12 and a half minutes into grappling here, um, it's it's a long time. It's a very long time, and there is definitely some attrition there. And it looks like oh, Luke Trying is able to, to spin it around, take the back. Luke, um, he is he's able to get, get a body, body triangle, triangle and he follow Alejandro. All right, he's able to. So 
here he's, he's not completely chest to back, right? Um, but he still is able to start threatening some chokes from here. Um, and that triangle, that body triangle is extremely uncomfortable, especially when you're face down, right? It's one of the most uncomfortable posi position, non-typical submission positions yeah, especially in jiu-jitsu. those long legs that he has. Exactly. That's just really uncomfortable. And you actually do occasionally see guys get a submission just by stretching their opponents out on their stomach there with a really tight it body triangle. It sounds like he but, might even be smothering him. We can't see from this angle, but there is definitely some some heavy breathing going on on the bottom there. Yeah, and there is time to work here, too. You've got about a minute and 45 seconds left, which with a body triangle locked in like this and someone like Luke on your back, that's a long time. Absolutely. But remembering, you know, Alejandro's main goal in this position is just to survive, get out, and make it to that final round unless he can get back out and, and submit. But Luke's got a pretty tight body triangle in here, and he's now he is fully on the back. But you're exactly right, though. This isn't this isn't ADCC. This isn't IBJJF. This isn't your local tournament. There, when the time goes off, oh, he's that's going to start to get here. tight. This is neck tight, cracking, on, tight. neck cracking Ooh. on that left arm. This you can is tight. This is tight. Oh, oh, there's, there's the tap. tap. Wow. 352. We got the tap from the back from Luke Shiomos. What a good match. That was that was an excellent main event. Went 14 of the uh, full 15 minutes. Two black belts leaving it on the mat. I love it. That was some good stuff. That was some very, very good stuff. Looks like we're going to have our final. Uh... We'll be hearing from Luke in just a moment here. Again, arena grappling at Droog's MMA and Jiu Jitsu. Good showmanship. I love it. Friends at the end. They come in, they smash each other, and then they come out and they're friends. That's some good stuff. Shout out to Five Star Productions, uh, one of the sponsors for the event. That's going to be the DJ. And then shout out to Alec Kearns from Angles and Volker. He's the reason why Droogs exists. <laughs> He's the real estate agent. Use this guy. Shout out to Niall Cummins. And then obviously our production team behind the scenes. Good stuff. <laughs> <laughs> not, it, not anymore. Not, not anymore. anymore. We have some major decision making to be doing in the very near future, but first we'll hear first from Luke Shiomos. Our main event winner. Please come take a seat. What's up, guys? Uh, what's what's going up, on? Luke? Congratulations. How are you feeling? feeling tired. I knew he was going to be tough. When we trained in the gym, I usually have to wait for him to get tired, which I had to do here as well. Was that part of your game plan? Yeah, yeah, definitely. I wanted to jump on things, but he's really. I mean, he has energy, he's almost impossible to submit, so I knew I had to wait, get him slippery. Listening to my coach helped a lot, because as much as I usually am patient, his coaching was telling me to be like even more patient than what I usually am. So, Do you feel like you got to the game that you were looking for today? What was your plan coming into this, yeah, besides I, making him tired? I usually play a good bottom game. I don't really like takedowns too much. They're fun, but they're tiring. I'm not the best at them yet. I was really going for a Kimura on that side, but... I also like going under for legs, just like I was doing. The second round, I think I got him up, or I got him down, and I came up. But then time right now, I think it was like not enough time to really work. I can't remember exactly what happened at the end there. But, I, oh yeah, I was on the cage. He fell down trying to go for my leg. And then his, I just climbed on top of him. So ideally, I want to finish on top, either on the back or with like an arm bar or triangle. So I feel like it went pretty much how I wanted to. Looked good in there. And how did you feel about the cage? Have you fought in the cage before for grappling? Never for grappling. We have a cage at my gym. I don't use it a lot, but I used to train with Bill Algio. I would kind of help him with, with fights too. So, yeah, absolutely. But, so I kind of worked on pinning someone against the wall like that too. So I have some experience, but not much at all. Do you want to what do you me, think about uh, the arena format? Honestly, I was not excited about it. <laughs> I love points and I love I like the honesty. I love getting out without having to kill myself. So it went it worked out, but I will I will come back. It's just one I have to really prepare for. I mean, we all watch you, and you're definitely a submission hunter and a gamer, so I'm surprised to hear that because you're a, a silent killer, really. Thank you. That's awesome. Awesome performance, man. I appreciate it. Anything else you want to say or shout out anyone? No, I just appreciate the the event. It's a lot of fun. It didn't take too long either. So, yeah, no, yeah. In and out. yeah. Thanks for coming in. Yeah, congratulations. All right, so I think that uh, is going to be the end of our night here at Arena. Um, the yeah, the so uh, the three of us are going to convene real quick. We're going to talk about um, 
our three bonus winners, which just for one last time, we have a $100 bonus to the submission of the night, a $100 bonus to the individual performance of the night, and a $50 sub, uh, bonus for the fastest submission in a round. Um, so we'll be back soon to uh, let you know our winners and give them the killer, awesome, amazing arena trophies. So we'll be back soon.